Welcome back. Before we start this video, I highly recommend watching the last progress video link on the top where I spent weeks grinding in the wilderness to make the Void Waker, allowing me to discover all the best uses of it in this video. With that out of the way, it has been a lot of fun working on the remaining BIS items and collection logs and stuff with the Void Waker, and I have found so many good places along the way where this item is shockingly good. I have all the information that you possibly want to know about the Void Waker, how good it is generally speaking, and where it excels. So sit back and learn. If this video was useful or enjoyable, please leave a like and subscribe for more future item grinds and testing because I got the Accursed Scepter coming up next and some other really cool items and weapons that I have yet to go over in depth that I wish to cover very soon. Okay, let's talk about the Void Waker in a general sense before we go nitty gritty with the specific bosses and use cases. So generally speaking, the Void Waker stats is incredibly similar to that of a whip. It's also the same speed as a whip. And another cool stat it has is the stab style. It has a very nice 70 base stab making it also like a Zermak and Hosta. Which means right off the bat this weapon is incredibly flexible on its own without a special attack. A fast and strong melee weapon in general. Most veteran players can understand how good the whip is conceptually and practically. So treat the Void Waker at the very least like a whip, but with a nice stab option. So generally speaking, this weapon is pretty good all around, whether you use it as Slayer, Training, or Bossing, and of course, PKing. However, its nice base stats and speed is only the beginning of its real power. The Void Waker has a devastating special attack called Disrupt, using only 50% special energy, this special attack is a 100% hit rate, I am not joking, it is a 100% hit rate, and can hit a minimum of 50% of your max hit, and up to 150% of your max hit. So, it can hit up to 70s and 80s, and never hit small. The special is a magic style hit based on your strength level. This special attack is very unique compared to other very powerful special attack weapons like Dragon Claws, and Zara Crossbow because although those weapons are very accurate, can miss and it will miss a lot against very tanky bosses. But the Void Waker special simply does not miss so it completely skips that problem. What does this mean in a general sense? It means that this weapon special attack is one of the best specials of all time because you can almost never go wrong with using this special attack in any situation, whether it's for training, bossing, or PKing. This special attack is also best in slot in quite a few situations and we will go into detail now on those. So with the basics out of the way, let's get into more specific uses where it is arguably or definitively the best. I just want to briefly talk about PK before PVM as it is definitely one of the best spec weapons out there for that. I am no expert in that department but it's strong melee normal attacks and 100% magic special attack makes it super deadly. I personally have used it a bit for anti pk while grinding the wildy boss drops and it definitely makes a lot of the less experienced pkers packing i'm sure all the pk creators have gone in depth on it so i'll just leave it at that for PKing. let's talk about the pvm best in slot uses i did end up finding some bosses where this void waker performs at levels that i've never experienced with other weapons i'll list them real quick nightmare corporeal beast mimic rage 3 next Bandos, Zami, and Metal Dragons. Remember, these bosses or NPCs are where the Void Waker performed exceptionally well, and it doesn't mean that it's only good in those places. This weapon special is decent or good practically anywhere, but we're gonna cover the most exceptional use cases here. So let's talk about Nightmare first. This is where Void Waker is at its best in PVM because Nightmare is so tanky to just about everything but Crush, and the best spec weapons available previously was either the Granite Maul with the Ornate Handle or Dragon Claws. Both either miss a lot or just don't hit that high in general for the amount of spec bar you use. But the Void Waker bypasses all that defense and has a high average hit so it easily beats the previous spec weapons here. You can also use the special very often throughout the fight with 
a combination of Death's Charge spell from the RCS spellbook and Light Bearer. I recommend wearing the Light Bearer during the pillar phase while you're maging. And you will essentially use Death's Charge every minute alongside uh, anything else like Thralls. 700 kills. I'm gonna try to go for a thousand KC of Osiris Nightmare because I still need to get this Harm Orb as its best assault and the pets. So let's see if we can get one of those at least within the 300. We do have a lot of food, so. Oh my god, look at that. Two specs with the thingy, Boy Waker. And we got it down to HHP. And then for my sight to splash. Haha. <laughs> Oh my god, what? How did I PB off of that? 637? Huh? That just felt like a very normal kill to me. Alright, I've already uh, been my old time. Three times already. In like 50 kills. Actually, stupid. Damn. It was 654, so 637. Damn, that's uh, 17 seconds. Post White Waker. Faster. Jeez. Nice. Over 7 kills an hour, guys. Holy shit. That's a PB for me. I did admit I used the Scythe the whole time, but the Void Waker got me the 7, though. I've done plenty of Scythe nightmares, and I've gone close to 7, but never quite, so... Before I continue showcasing more of where to best use the Void Waker, a quick word from our sponsor. After grinding bosses hard for drops on RuneScape, I like to relax and do some AFK like cutting redwoods, so I can do other things such as playing another game like Clash of Clans, a fun online multiplayer game. You get to run a village set in a fantasy themed world and oversee its growth. It's like kingdom management in RuneScape, except way more fun and engaging. There's tons of ways to tactically build your village to protect against invaders like cannons, traps, and barriers like walls. Use your brains to tactically build a force to perfectly invade any rival villages like rangers for long distance attacks to avoid cannons and attack through walls, and warriors with lots of HP to tank hits buying you time to destroy your enemy's base. Fight against other villages controlled by other players to plunder their resources to accelerate your own kingdom's growth. There's also single player campaigns as well if you're feeling like smashing through some goblin villages for loot. Also, this game is very AFK friendly, upgrading your base or train your soldiers and various other activities can be done without you needing to actively play the game. So you can make meaningful progress while watching a show or even playing another game. Clash of Clans is a unique balance of progression, strategy, and PvP that makes for a really fun game. Download Clash of Clans for free now using my link in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen to build your ultimate kingdom today. Next is Corporeal Beast. This boss has all damage from most types of attacks, except spears, halberds, and magic attacks. So the Void Waker special attack is amazing here because the special is a magic attack, meaning it will do full damage on Corp. Things like Dragon Claws would normally be better, but it's half damage at Corp. Now you can see why. Personally, for me, I do the suicide method with max gear. It has pushed my method to consistently closer to 10 kills per hour on average. If you do any other method like the AFK solo method or maybe even small teams, the Void Wicker spec is still arguably one of your best spec weapons there. Popular and cheap special attack weapons like Halberd is nowhere as good as Void Wicker as it's almost twice as slow and rarely hits high enough. So if you have the money, Void Wicker is a huge upgrade over that. Nice. 67... Makes 100 damage. God, it's so crazy. You can almost always expect 100 damage from two specs. Something about landing 100% of the time is just very broken. Looks like it's time. Big hit. 65 into a what? 69. Let's go. Holy shit. That's like 130 damage. Hmm. Right around the hour mark, so... And I made a mistake because uh, I died when specking, so it actually would have been over 10 an hour there so that was really good definitely a keeper here bro all right we just did oh my god we did it 10 kills an hour holy shit 
using void worker spec only uh you might be asking why I have zari crossbow well this thing is actually really good defense it gives good magic defense and good melee defense really nice to see that my kills per hour has slightly increased overall with the void worker edition making the grind for the spectral sigil and just hopefully some other placeholder sigils for collection log much much nicer definitely going to do more corp next is the mimic boss this boss is rarely done because it's only accessible through lots of clue scroll grinding but i did get a mimic chance so i thought why not let's give it a look and from past experience dragon claws had a hard time hitting and i looked up the stats to find out that actually it's almost as tanky as nightmare no wonder why the dragon claws were struggling so the void waker is easily the best in slot spec weapon at mimic simply because it bypasses all that defense this is more of a novel to use but like i said i got info on just about everything all right here we go we got the mimic now i'm gonna open this uh, appetizer here the beginner clue oh yes finally first ever <laughs> beginner unique 17 beginners but all right that was a good appetizer now onto the main course the master clue mimic all right well it's okay Boy Waker is also considered best in slot at TOA, which is race 3. Although it's not as profound as it was at Nightmare, it is a bit of a more niche use in race 3. But let's talk about it. From my experience, Boy Waker is best in slot at Carefree at the higher levels because Carefree gets so tanky that most spec weapons start missing a lot. Let's say 400 plus. I also found it good at Baba as well because it gets fairly hard to land most damage specs at higher levels as well. Boy Waker at TOA overall is like Dragon Claws, but I would say ZZB is still overall the best spec weapon there if you had to pick one. Personally, if you have like the best gear available, I found ZZB and Void Waker to work really well together in Race 3. ZZB is undeniable at Zebek and P1 and P3 Warden, and sometimes Akka if it switches to range weakness on high HP. But I prefer 100% Void Waker specs like Kefri and Baba, because it's so consistent versus things like the claws and ZZB there. I still recommend using BGS to spec at least once on most TOA bosses, but how you handle the BGS is up to you in combination with your damage special type weapons. Yes. Oh, I killed it. <laughs> oh, 79. All right, spec time 68. Oh my God, 75. All right, and we will unleash Probably the final spec. So in total, I did six specs this kill. So that means on average, I did like 330 damage or something. Since my max hit is like uh, close to an 80 with this setup. My average spec should be like a 50 something. So yeah, six specs per kill. That's about 300 and like 30 damage. So that was a good time. No, he's not going to stab me. Oh, I am. I'm totally sapping him. Zap! I was wanted away from the last phase of Akka, and it decided to pray melee. And I'm going to switch to melee gear anyway, so it was perfect time to just put on the Void Waker and spec that last hit. Watch this. I am gonna zap this ranger. Void Waker is pretty good for killing the monkeys, especially with the spec. You can pretty much kill any monkey you want since it's a guarantee hit. The Void Waker's Whiplash stats is also amazing for killing the core at P2 Warden. I replaced my DDS with it so I don't lose inventory slot for my TOA runs. The high auto hits of the Void Waker combined with BGS for last hit easily makes 3 downing Warden without even adrenaline potions. And that will maximize your points so it's perfect replacement over DDS. Yep. Wait, what? No, I didn't. Where's my BGS? No. <sighs> By the way, do not use the Void Waker spec on the core on P2 Warden because it's a magic attack, so you won't get the max hit. You'll actually get the minimum hit. Okay, never mind. Okay, I can afford to make two mistakes with the Void Waker, so that's nice. Now, I'll be honest, I don't think the Void Waker is going to change my times a whole lot, but it does make the times more consistent, though. And uh, I can swap it out for DDS, so I guess in the future I'll definitely bring this over DDS. It's just way more fun and... And the consistency is really good. Next is the boss next. 
a lot of people are wondering whether or not the Void Waker spec is better than the Zarya Crossbow spec at next. And from my test experience, it depends on how you kill next. If you do range only, obviously CCB specs will be better because without Strength Gear, Void Waker damage is going to be a lot lower. However, when you're doing the hybrid method, which is arguably the best way to kill next with range and melee, the Void Waker, I'd say, is comfortably better overall spec weapon than CZB. And we're not even going to talk about Claws because it won't even come close into the equation here. As it misses a lot on next. The reason why Void Waker spec is better in the hybrid setup is that the Void spec never misses and also hits high without you losing HP. Unlike CZB where the specs will miss probably like at least a fifth of the time and also makes you lose HP. The 100% hit rate is disgusting for speeding up the blood phase because you can basically do guaranteed 100 damage with the full spec bar and then use the altar and do a back to back another 100 damage with another full spec bar for an easy 200 damage. Sorry Crossbow can also go for a back to back spec for 200 damage but the problem is you do miss like a fifth of the time with the special attack. Void Waker just doesn't care. So that means rushing the blood phase is more consistent with the Void Waker. Damn, you saw that? Holy shit, that was insane. Four Void Waker specs just literally demolished the, the boss's HP. And because the Void Waker spec is a magic attack on Zara's face, you can actually chain multiple melee hits of, let's say, your Fang. And when it's about to switch to Prey Melee, you don't actually need to switch your melee gear to range too early. You can actually use two Void Waker specs right after and completely bypass that Prey Melee as it is a magic attack before switching to range gear. It's a really nice touch. Look at what it can do. Prey Melee? Don't matter. So I can chain like six melee hits back to back, basically. Finally, the Void Waker's strong autos is nice for damaging the Blood Reavers over the Fang if you're already in melee gear. Also has a stab option too, so even accidental hits on the boss will probably still do some decent damage. And you can save your friends trapped in ice with it too. So yeah, definitely best to saw it next if doing the hybrid method. I kind of wish I wasn't fully done at next already so I can spam the Void Waker more. It's pretty fun. Other notable bosses I consider best in slot but far more niche for the Void Waker is at General Grador Bandos and Krill Susaroth at Zami. If you're doing melee Zami or melee Bandos for whatever reason, Void Waker spec is amazing there since they are pretty tanky and claws do miss a good amount of time. Nowadays people just range or even mage the boss these days and it's typically easier to do for learners. But with the Void Waker, Melee option has improved quite a bit. Of course, it's fairly costly though. I like using the Void Waker spec when the boss is low HP for a high chance of a clean finish, but it's okay to just use it whenever. If you have Guthans for healing, you can actually use Death's Charge and Arch's Spellbook and combine it with Light Bear during minion portion to get at least one or two special attacks every kill. So that's really nice and reliable. But yeah, fairly niche. So this is more of a fun knowledge than anything. Holy shit. And my auto attack is 50. Oh, that's actually so crazy. Holy. Yeah, this thing is basically a whip. Yep, as you can see. All right, I think I just have to tell you. But I did uh, over 15 kills. Uh, Bandos on my first try. And I haven't done Bandos in forever with melee. And yeah, the Void Waker definitely freaking slapped though. I try to get a Zami Tass, but unfortunately I spent 500 points and I didn't get it. But it's okay, we're just going to do off Tass Zami so I can show you the Void Waker. It's actually probably even more useful off Tass since on Tass my weapons are more accurate. But Void Waker don't care, it's just going to hit every time. Nice KO. Yeah, I love the Void Waker. Damn, that guarantee hit is so good. Oh. Nice. That was a good KO with the Void Waker. Bye. Alright, unfortunately, we're going to leave uh, early here, but I did end up doing 66 KC, so that was like 64. 16 kills that trip, and not on task. Not on task is quite harder to kill the boss. Also, on a side note, this weapon is great for Slayer task, DPS. Usually a bit worse than Dragon Claws, but better on things like Mithril Dragons and other tanky dragons. So a few mobs for Slayer. 
quite a lot going forward at various places for collection log stuff and pet hunting and probably new future bosses too. Oh, I got... Ooh, nice. I wasn't expecting that. Cool. New ancient page from the Mithril Dragons. Hell yeah. That's a collection log slot. I'll take it. All right, we are about to finish this Slayer task with Mithra Giants, and yes, I would definitely keep bringing the Void Waker here. It is so nice. So if you have a lot of food and you know you have enough food to finish the trip, just keep using the Void Waker. Oh yeah, let's talk about Wyvern. So you can use claws here, but sometimes it's annoying because then you don't have your shield on. Which really can mess you up if you mess it up, you know, because then you don't have protection against the icy breath. So this is nice because White Waker, you can always keep the shield on at all times and it hits pretty much like claws on a normal Slayer task. So yeah, I'd say I'd use this at Wyverns, like Skeletal Wyverns as well. Fossil Island Wyverns, whatever. But as I've said, Void Waker is one of the best damage specs out there. It's hard to go wrong with using it. There are so many other bosses where this weapon is pretty good, like Sire, Smoke Devil, and just about any boss you typically melee. So feel free to explore outside of these recommendations. But those are the bosses I found the Void Waker to be exceptionally helpful, and you will definitely see me using this weapon quite a lot going forward at various places for collection log stuff and pet hunting and probably new future bosses too. So that's about it with my progress in discovering where to use the Void Waker after getting it. But of course, I work on other things on the side like the collection log stuff and just trying to figure out uh, where to best use all these other weapons that we've gotten recently. So you'll see some of our other progress now. Ooh, a dragon bone necklace again. I keep getting these. And, and let me tell you, they're pretty rare. I think they're at least one in a thousand, so. Oh my god, maxed. 88. Hard clue here. Oh wow, master clue, Zami DI body. Sweet, you got a new item on the collection log. So a while ago, I did a video on the Venator bow showing you where to best use it. It was mostly for training range and for Slayer tasks. And some people were like, yo, actually it's good at a boss grotesque guardians because you get two hits on the ranger version of the boss because of the bounce and on paper that sounded great so i was like okay i'll give it a test some people even claim it was better than the blowpipe so i was like okay i do have to go give it a, a test and i did i did a whole task using the venator bow and in practicalness it just wasn't as good as a blowpipe just because you have to set up the formation where the two bosses are together in order to do it so you waste some time just setting it up and you still have to use the blowpipe to do it properly and you can't really do it well on the first phase you can only really do it on the second phase of dawn so that also just made it really annoying and also the bounce shot takes time to make it through so the blowpipe overall was better i didn't get any time faster than when i was using the blowpipe so you can still use it if you want i was testing with bow dragon arrows and darts but yeah it's like venator bow almost same dps as blowpipe and more work so damn oh, i didn't realize it was that expensive 500k each oh, wow okay it's like 1.5 mil just to test yeah I, I like this yeah i think i'm gonna go with this to be honest which power ranger did you guys become after this update easy oh two is that two that must be two right tell me that's two collection slots two holy easy clues so free black skirt and a black beret wow this is massive one more task oh i got it yes with six left oh my god let's go uh -huh. speaking of little goals we're done ah it's one crack in tentacle even though i do have the enhanced trident in my bank of course you know from episode like a hundred plus ago but yes sir green logged the kraken 2500 tasks holy shit 700 slayer points that is the biggest amount of points that you could possibly get and we were getting 90 kills an hour i was pretty much using shadow the whole time so 
After getting the Shadow of Tumikin, I went ahead to explore where it's best installed at, and I found many, many good uses for it, many bosses, including Kelfa Queen. I was getting like probably 28, 29 kills an hour on my first few tries, so it was really goddamn amazing. But the problem is that if I use the Shadow too much everywhere, then I'm going to have to eventually buy runes and stuff. So I was thinking, hey, maybe I wouldn't use the Shadow at Alpha Queen. Maybe there's an alternative. And that's where the Blue Karis came into mind because it works outside of Race 3 and it gives uh, a lot of accuracy boost against Kelfites. So it was definitely made for Kelfite Queen in mind. I think I ended up getting around 27 kills an hour just using the Blue Karis the whole time. The melee phase and the range phase. So it's not a bad alternative. So if I'm really short on runes, I'll probably use this to kill Kelfite Queen for collection log stuff. Oh, 195! Holy shit, melee only KQ all day every day, bro. Oh my god, I just hit a 195. I think that's actually the single highest hit you can ever do in all of old school RuneScape. 195. Occasionally, when I get a Black Demon task, I go ahead and do some demonics for the collection log refill, since I got all of them pre-log. But I've kind of found a better room than the normal single room, which is the multi-room, because... I remember using the multi-room in leagues since you kill them really quick and honestly with my gear i do kill them pretty quick even in the main game the demonics are probably not damaged by other people perfect for iron man like me and also thralls work better too since it can sometimes force it to pray mage and that means i don't have to switch to a different style i can just keep camping the style that i was just using so doubling my time of not having to switch oh nice collection log slot let's go oh yeah Let's go. It's weird. Imagine being excited for a freaking uh, list of pieces. Lol. Let's see. What about the hard? Oh, yes. We got a new slot. Let's go. 698. Blue D high G. Let's go. Easy. Oh, my God. I got a master clue from easy. And there it is. My 700 slot. <laughs> what the hell? How rare is that? That must be so rare. That's cool. Leather chap G. I've never gotten this before.